Hello, this is Ramirez with Tidewater Renaissance Fighting Arts. Uh, this is part of my armor series. Uh, we're talking about different types of armor, and one of the things, aside from your helmet, that you're going to be wanting to get is some type of chest and torso protection. Um, the piece I'm going to show you is not a part of my current active kit. It's something that I bought that I was like, okay, um, I'd like to have more... Uh, steel in my kit so that if I'm doing a, a demonstration somewhere that I could use uh, I am probably going to be uh, selling this to a friend of mine because uh, he doesn't have a lot of armor and I'd like to have more people to uh, train with and uh, beat up during practices so uh, this may be going to him this is medieval collectibles um, German breastplate um, it can. It is not a cuirass. It is a breastplate, which means just the front. Uh, a cuirass would be the front and back. Um, pros. This is a nice design. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it is relatively inexpensive for a very expensive hobby. A uh, cuirass or even a brigandine like mine can go anywhere from five to eight to a thousand dollars five to eight hundred to a thousand dollars and that's a lot considering that's just protecting your torso um in contrast this particular one and i i kind of bring this up because within hema within the blast vector community this idea of doing half armors is becoming popular so um, there is a, a much more expensive one. They're like, oh, it comes with arms. Um, this is another alternative that's a good deal cheaper. And like most of the breastplates out there, it straps. So you have two kind of going over the shoulder to the, basically the back of the rib cage is where they connect. And then you have another strap here that straps around the back. And if you see any half armors, this is kind of a very common way to strap a half armor. Um, if I go ahead and unbuckle these, which I might have to pause the video, but hopefully we'll be able to talk through the process. Uh, one of the downsides to a lot of half armors you'll see out there is that the designs are either too thin in terms of the metal, so they're great for like LARP or cosplay kind of stuff, but they aren't really fightable. Uh, some people argue you can uh, make use of 18 gauge if you're, depending on what you're fighting. I, eh, I don't trust that. Uh, this is actually a, um, I'll say this is a 16 gauge which at that point, you know, I feel a little more, if, you, if you're if you wearing good gambeson, uh, 16 gauge will do you just fine. I think 18 gauge you're gonna get a lot of dents out of and you may have some issues. So, um, good, I was able to unstrap it. One of the things I do like about this is it does have an actual fold, F-U-L-D, which means if I put that on, this actually does lift up. This is just a little small for me. And this, unfortunately, is their extra large. I can actually stretch it out. And I'll try to move the camera up here. Uh, one of the things that is very nice about it is um, it does seem a little flat. I've had other historical reenactors tell me, you know, I don't like it for that purpose. The nice thing is the uh, breastplate actually rests high enough. I can bend down. I can sit and this folds, just kind of folds up. So if I want to sit down, I'm actually sitting in my chair right now, I can. Um, but also it's far enough forward that this is not against my body. And that's actually very important. The chest, when it rests on me, it's actually forward enough that if you take a hit, and I think this is where I want to take this off, Okay, so um, 
one of the things you, you want to know about your armor is it shouldn't actually rest against your body. If it does, anything, any impact that happens is going to transfer from the breastplate to you, which means if someone hits you with a spear, that force goes directly into your body. You actually want there to be a little bit of space between you and plate armor. It's a little different with brigandine. And when I get to a brigandine, I'll talk a little bit more about that. But ultimately... If there's that little gap, you're not going to feel the force as hard. So a lot of times when you see um, some breastplates that are come out of India and stuff, and they're really kind of flat and they're really cheap and inexpensive, because they're cheap and happen to be inexpensive, um, you want something that's going to also that forward pointing helps to deflect shots. One of the other things I really like about that breastplate is it has the roped collar. So the collar, and I'll bring it back here so you can see it. You see that little lip there? And also here on the shoulder. Uh, these all help with that idea of deflection. So if a blade is coming up at you, it will stop there. Or it will stop here before it gets to the arm. And historically, those are things you want. They're not just decorative features, but they're functional features of the armor. Um, for something like this to be, and I think it was 158 US, is a ridiculously good price. Um, I had other people in HEMA arguing with me, and I kind of just deleted my post about it because it wasn't worth it to say... Um, when it comes to if you want to add additional parts like shoulder armor um, you want to be able to point that to your your, your um, armor if you're, if you're doing it historically accurately you don't want to just tie it to a strap up here or have it you, you want it to be part of your armor and also you want your arm your shoulder armor which i actually just did a video so hopefully i will uh, link that at the end of this video you want that to be the right type of protection be it a spalder be it a pauldron and you want something that fits right so throwing in a set of uh, spalders or pauldrons unless you're willing to customize them not exactly helpful because if it, if a uh, pauldron is too long it will interfere with the elbow if it's too short it will leave a gap that will you know, make you for potential strikes so I'd rather just get the pieces that I need and as I said 158 I think I had a coupon for like 20% off which basically transferred to the shipping costs that's a really good uh, breastplate Especially considering it has the uh, the the fold, it does kind of um, it does bend and lift. It articulates uh, just below the um, placard, and just to kind of give you a little bit of the word on breastplates. Technically, this top part here is the breastplate. The breastplate should technically guard this up to your rib cage. Then you have the placard, which in this case is riveted on. So this part here is the placard, and the placard is what covers the soft and squishy bits below the rib cage. And you don't want that to go past your hips because if it goes past your hips, then you can't bend. You know, you need to be able to bend. So that's why you ultimately have the fold, which is this part here. So that covers the top of the hips. If you uh, want, there are additional plates that then cover like the very top of the legs that normally would buckle onto that articulated piece. Uh, this one isn't designed with those parts in mind. So you have those three parts. In some cases, placards are um, buckled to the breastplate. In this case, it's riveted on. So that's the difference. It is something that was done. Um, 
generally on cheaper, more munitions grade armor. Uh, more custom pieces would have the, the buckle and strap method. But for what we do in harness, this is fine. Um, it's actually quite nice. And cost-wise, it's one of the places that I would tell you if you're not going to wear chainmail, mm, might be an issue. But if you are planning to wear chainmail, I see a lot of people out there, they'll be wearing their chainmail, they'll wear a breastplate like the one here or others. You know, you don't have to go with that one. Um, but as I said, I think that for the cost, it's a good deal. Um, I will put a link in the description as far as where you can go to get this. Uh, they do have a number of sizes. That's the extra large. Uh, I'm about a, a 48, 48 regular chest. It's a little tight to get it on me. I need to bend it a little bit more just to open it up. It's mild steel, so it's not. You do one of the things when you're considering any armor is armor upkeep. So I keep that oiled with a fluid film. Um, there are other things, but you're going to definitely be maintaining any type of munitions kit, anything made with mild steel. Uh, you'll notice that my helmet, probably a little more shiny because it is stainless steel. Most of my kit is either stainless steel or titanium. So um, maintenance is a little bit, um, maintenance for it is a little bit less, but the cost is a lot more. This is something that's a great alternative for someone who wants to get into harness, but they don't necessarily have the money to spend on really, really expensive armor, but they want something effective that will get the job done. So once again, my name is Ramirez. I'm with Tidewater Renaissance Fighting Arts. We're based out of Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, I'll leave information about our club below if you'd like to join us. If you do have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Um, I'm always happy to answer your questions, and I will see you in the next video.